It has like, you know, amazing back air, amazing drill air and forward air. So I definitely think that Wolf is a good pick to go with. But we're seeing a bunch of nares on the left side right now. <laughs> Holy crap. We're going to be seeing a lot of nares in total because not only will we be seeing Paolo nares, we're going to be seeing Wolf nares. We're probably going to be seeing Lucina nares. This is actually kind of a uh, hodgepodge of top two characters yeah, right now. Nair City right now. It's always fun to watch two Palutena's like take turns nairing each other. Like, what are you doing? What, 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 what am I watching? Right I'm just like, how could you get hit by nair? It's almost like there's this video uh, about two like uh, Pokemon trainers playing Magikarp and the other one would try to hit one with a splash attack. It doesn't work obviously, so they would respond with a splash attack and it just goes on and ad infinitum. It's very hilarious. The first kill right there, pal, uh, the buzz off the stage. Don't for, oh, when the anime, wasn't there like two Metapods with fight and they were both using Harden? Uh, I think there was. I feel like that was early on. It, it feels like that sometimes. You just go, ugh, what are you doing? But honestly, this Nair trading back and forth is much less of a thing once you have a teammate, especially a teammate who is as aware as both of these guys' partners, uh, Mr. E and Ralphie, able to follow up on a Nair from like across the stage. They just go where they need to in order to bounce them back in the forward air and just finish the combo off with an up air. Mm. All right, we got Ralphie kind of taking the middle of the stage, throwing the lasers. Wow, great coverage from Mr. E. I love Mr. E's placement. It feels like he puts himself exactly where he needs to be. Just wow. like chooses his... Oh, wow. Oh, hey, hey, he need to put a little bit more placement on that because he just walked right into that. I would have stayed my butt on the ledge. I mean, yeah, the thing with it is because you can charge smash attacks for extra long in this game, there isn't that same sort of like, oh, I know the limits and I know exactly when I can get up now. Yeah. I think uh, in certain situations, you kind of just need to stay on the ledge um, and just hope your partner can see what's going on and kind of disrupt it a little bit. You can't hold it forever in 2v2s. Well, in general, but definitely in 2v2s. Wow, they're doing such a great job with platform pressure. You see that? Like, one was narrowing with Palutena on the right side and then uh, a pressure by Mr. E on the left side. All right, we've got ledge guard. Okay. Wow, just duff him. Not only that, you see how Ray was able to completely dodge that forward smash? Yeah. Like they, I, I love the communication for both of these teams, but especially Ralphie and Ray. You can see that they've teamed a lot. They know what the other one wants to be doing. Uh, uh, there's another up air kill. Jeez. That was so early. All right, Nair City. It's like a Palatin getting the taste of her own medicine when she gets Nared, like, from one side of the stage to the other. All right, back, back throw by DeBuzz. Doesn't get a conversion off of that. But Mr. E does lose the stock, and DeBuzz is by himself. And normally, like, I would say uh, DeBuzz by himself. Yes, it's bad, but he's such a good player. But he's up against these two who are so good with the 2v1, who are, in their own respects, amazing players. So this is going to be a huge mountain for DeBuzz to climb. But I, it's interesting because Blue Team is really respecting him. If you notice, yeah, it feels I think, like... I think they're doing it a little bit too much respecting because in that situation before the kill there, we have Palatina behind Wolf, and there was no explosive flame. That's a free explosive flame. He's, he's, the buzz is too busy worrying about the Wolf in front of him. If you space the explosive flame right, he has to, like, block, and then Wolf can go in. But right now, the buzz is doing a great job. He's scaring him off. All right, off stage. What we got? Ooh! Oh, trying to go for the two-frame on that down smash. Doesn't get it. DeBuzz has basically been stuck on the, off the stage, but really good there. That was like recognizing that back throw probably wouldn't have killed. So just go for the guaranteed death. Throw him into your teammate. You know that Ray is ready for it. And the up smash yeah. cleans out game one. Pretty convincing, I'd say, actually, for uh, Blue Team. All right, so question for you. Now, before DeBuzz recovered on that last stop, he saw Wolf go to the ledge and shield way before he grabbed the ledge. Now, after you grabbed the ledge, what would you have done to avoid that situation? Because he was clearly looking for a grab into a four, uh, into some type of setup. What would you do in that situation? Because, like, Wolf could nair, and if you try to jump, you'd probably get hit by that anyway into a conversion. So what option is there? Like, you can't roll. Like, Palutena was in the right spot. And he can't hang out there for too long. Yeah. Because then Palutena can go for explosive play. Yeah. Or Wolf can just drop shield and down smash. Yeah. It's so hard. Does down B still be shield? Down B? It, 
It used to be that in Smash 4, Side B would just beat shields for some reason. Hmm. It would hit you out of shield. It, it would do like 2% or something, but it would just beat shields. Does it do that in this game as well? Uh, are you talking about for, for Palu or are you talking about for... For Palu. For, uh, you know, that's a good question. I, I know that she sort of has the reflector in her down B. Yeah, I, 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 something tells me it's more of like more of like a counter in this game. So you, you kind of want to wait for them to do something first than you or um, expect it to happen first. Yeah, I think that the reflector the only comes out when, uh, when there is a projectile. Yeah, yeah. If otherwise, I'd say like just jump off and back, back and do like counters so that like you beat out the shield. Right, so look at actually, this. no a counter that beats shield is actually like, never mind. That sounds like the worst idea in the world. Yeah, it, <laughs> I just scary. realized. Oof. Oh, yeah. No, there's no way that it's like yeah, that. That's how you beat counters. You shield and don't or don't do anything. Oh it's my just, sweet! What the heck? Now, oh yeah, let's talk about the fact that uh, the buzz has now switched to Olimar. Uh, Olimar occupies a completely different play style than Palo. Yeah, definitely. So, he probably just wants to keep away and just pass through from a distance at this point and see if he can force them to do all the approaching. If anything, I feel like now Mr. E is going to be put in the position of like being the fast disruptor that the Buzz was sort of trying to do last night. Yeah. Well, the Buzz is at 90% right now, but we do have Wolf off the stage. We can punish. Try to. Nice try by the Buzz because he up smash. No kill there on the Wolf player. Nice parry. What we got here? Wolf runs to the, to the left side. 169, but there we go. So what's better at being at 69%, 169, right? <laughs> That's like the ultimate uh, Dragon Ball percent. Wow, back here, City. <laughs> this is to go even further beyond. Turns <laughs> to 169. Nice, nice. Uh, I want to, uh, another thing I'll say about uh, the Buzz's Olimar, I feel like the survivability is going to be a lot easier for him despite being a lighter character because he's so small. And in doubles when things are chaotic, even though both Alutena and Wolf have good hitboxes, you know, the moves that are going to kill are maybe like, you know, Wolf back air, Alu back air. It's going to be I mean, a little bit harder to land on such a small target. Yeah, it looks like uh, the Buzz is doing a good job avoiding a lot more attacks with the smaller character like you're saying. And he was kind of sneaking up on people a little bit early, just going a little Pikmin here and there, catching him with an up smash and a lot, paying attention. It seems a lot more easier to do that with a smaller body. All right. Wolf on the right, left side trying to control the middle. It's pushed back. Mr. E deals with this one while Olimar on the right side tries to recover. I love looking at uh, DeBuzz's, even in doubles, his use of Pikmin, his like knowledge of like which one he's going to be using. Right now, as you can see, he has two purples and a red, and he definitely wants those. Otherwise, he would have... You saw that, right? <laughs> the buzz almost got clipped by the up air. Oh, man. Wow. Very smart by the buzz. Whoa! That back here come from under the stage? Ooh, and now this is a pretty rough spot for Ralphie. It is possible that he'd be able to, especially with like a back air, be able to take out Mr. E. He's looking for it, and he actually oh, finds go. it. Wow, we now have a 1v1. I think this is the first 1v1 we've had this entire doubles bracket so far. Yeah, I'm surprised that um, Mr. E was as aggressive and up front as he was considering the percent. Olimar should have probably been the one that takes uh, the lead in that situation considering a uh, one back air was all it was needed. But 125, literally anything at this point. If he can get a blue pigment right now, like then he has something else to worry about with that throw. But right now, we got two Shaniquas on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Bat oh, dang <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I gotta say, I love to buzz his play right there, knowing, like, Ralphie had to slow down. He started mm -hmm. losing a lot of lasers, a lot of lasers, because that's kind of, you know, if he makes a single mistake, he's dead. Yeah. And so he's like, maybe I can get some percent at least so that when I go in, I will get more value. Um, but to buzz, knowing that that was basically the only option that Ralphie was really trying to, you know, go for, yeah. able to just sneak through and get that forward air exactly when he needed to. Guaranteeing that, uh, well, it's 1-1 one, one now, and I think that the Olimar uh, character switch is working out to the point where, despite the fact that they have stage counter pick, it's going to be a really hard mountain to climb for Ralphie Ray. Some pivotal adjustments need to happen in order for them to actually make it to winner's finals. Yeah, I think what my personal opinion is in order for them to deal with this situation, um, we need to see Ralphie, Utopia, and Ray push the Olimar to the ledge push them so they can just deal with one side at a time because with, whenever Olimar is by himself or on a, and you have and they're sandwiched together 
they tend to forget that what the buzz is doing sometimes because some, it's hard to you know pay attention when he's a smaller character and he's getting a lot of uh, uh, backstabs as a result. You know what I mean? So let's see if we can um, kind of corral that and put him off stage a little bit more and just force him to live on the ledge. Live on the ledge. You know, I felt like that that, that was gonna happen. Like I was inviting that <laughs> statement. I mean, I wasn't sure. You proved me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now we're gonna be getting into the last game here for semis. Uh, this is best of five. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so I believe, is it the all top eight is best of five? All, well, okay, I can agree with that okay. considering that all this, top eight is payout. So. This is looking good for Palutena right now. Pushed the buzz off the stage with multiple at dash attacks, but kind of went away from the situation to go for a 2v1. Now, usually in doubles, you, it's good to go for that. You knock someone off stage, go get the advantage situation on the other side of the stage. But against Ola Lamar, because he racks up so much damage so quickly, and he's so bad off stage, that it probably would have been better just to patch him a little bit more and see if your partner can deal with the 1v1. A little bit longer. Oh, oh that was that amazing was so spacing from Mr. E. The oh, drift getting... able to avoid that counter attack up smash. Oh, but he doesn't avoid that one. He is getting thrown into it. And at this point, I'd wow. say that blue team has made the adjustments that I was sort of actually questioning whether they'd be able to make, but absolutely already taking the buzz's stock. Wow. Oh, Jesus that was Christ. Huge. Now, the Buzz lost his first stop because he threw a Pikmin into a Bearing Wolf, but the, it wasn't the purple one, so he kind of, kind of, you know, calmed himself with his pants down in that situation, but immediately comes down and gets an F-Smash. Kills super early. I think that was the purple one. Yeah. All right, Omar on like, the stage. Yeah, I feel like the Buzz might actually, like, last game we saw how he really was opting for those purple Pikmin. And given the chance to reorganize his lineup, I feel like he might actually go for that again. Yeah, the part, of the, reason, really well last time. part of the reason why he won the first, that last game is because he had, like, he forced the opponent to worry about two purple Pikmin. He can't just run at you and just throw stuff. Not only that, but think about it in doubles, you actually would rather have the actual knockback from a purple as opposed mm -hmm. to just the latch on from any of the others. Like, look at that, he's just throwing the blue away. He's like, I don't want that. He's not going to have a lot of time for the, those grabs right now in the Helter Skelter environment. So definitely purple, double purple right now. Let's go. Yeah, like look at this. The way that he's cycling between aerials and uh, actual throwing of the purple Pikmin. Oh, but that's another wow. purple. Oh, Uh-oh. Can you get back, Wolf? Yes, you can. Nice job. He's looking for it. Rolls up in blocks. Doesn't get punished for it. Oh. Oh, Ralphie needs to be staying alive right here. Wow, he does more than stay alive. He actually cleans up to Buzz's stock, putting Blue Team in a really decent lead, especially considering that Mr. E is 104%, can absolutely die to quite a bit. But an unfortunate team kill is actually going to be evening up the stock count. Wow. Even worse, Mr. E finds what? the forward smash, and now Red Team is in the lead. What just happened? Everything was just fine. Mr. E off stage. How alive? Okay. Right, we have Red Team on the right side trying to find a safe way down by the up smash. 76% on the buzz. Did the buzz do forward smash like seven oh, times? Oh no! One more of those, he's dead! Okay, he gets back low. Alright. Blue Team with the control. Red Team could not get from the left side. Up smash out of shield. The buzz at critical mass. Can he get back down? No, I have to say this, this Olimar from DeBuzz is not working out nearly as well this time around. I'm wondering if Blue Team made the necessary adjustments to the point where oh, he, he has one might... Pikmin. That's the problem. DeBuzz might opt to go back to Palutena after this. 140. Get away, get away. Then again, Red Team is actually still absolutely in this. Even if DeBuzz gets taken out right here, Mr. E only has to... Oh, oh my no. god! Get him off. DeBuzz. Once again, a... Perfectly, like, like the, he's actually able to find these kills. Nice. He has been carrying this game for Red Team right there. Whoa, slash. So, so many so nice. pivotal moments brought home by Mr. E. That means that now they are up 2-1.
they just need one more game in order to actually uh, find themselves in winners' finals. Now, in that situation there, the, the final moments of that game, I was so focused on watching the buzz because he had to keep that last stop. He had to maintain presence on the board without getting hit by any of these uh, these finishing moves. He was blocking a lot in the uh, last moments. He wasn't getting grabbed at the same time, too. So very good job defensively by the buzz. I will also say, I don't know if you saw it, at one point, the buzz was at the very edge of the stage and got forward tilted by Ralphie and fell out of it. What? Oh, yeah, I did see that. I did see that. Yeah, that, that would have been the game right there. Absolutely. That would have actually won the game for Blue Team, basically. Yeah. Ralphie, and, Ralphie and Ray could have just played well and then cleaned up Mr. E from there. But be, like, that, that survival, that sort of RNG almost coming only in for because, the buzz. Only because of the size of Olimar did something like that happen in that situation. That was because he was not, just so high. Yeah, not only that, but afterwards, it felt like Ralphie was the one really trying to target down to Buzz, and Wolf's kill moves on a short character like that who's trying to stay grounded mm -hmm. are a little bit limited. You know, he has yeah, back air, but he has to back air really. Uh, sorry, really I was wrong. Ground. That was best of three, so it's over. Oh, yeah. okay. Womp, womp. Well, there we go.